course, yeah. Well, it is a hybrid instrument. It's an instrument that has no modern correspondent. It's a bit like the saxophone in that it, it, it combines two very different instruments in one. It has a cup mouthpiece, which is about, mine is about 10 or 11 millimeters wide. It's a very small cup mouthpiece, but it works just like a trumpet mouthpiece. This one's dark. It's made out of animal horn, it's a little piece of animal horn. The instrument itself is about as long as my arm. Uh, it's about as long as, a little bit longer than a, your average alto recorder. So it's about 70 centimeters long. And it is made of wood and covered in black leather. It's slightly curved because the original, well, the original idea of the instrument was it, it derives from people blowing into animal horns. If you take a cow's horn or a goat's horn and you uh, cut two or three finger holes into it, you can already play a few notes. And so this instrument has kind of animal uh, ancient origins. And when they started making them out of wood in the late middle ages, they kept the curved form simply because that was a sort of um, a reminder of its animal origin. But it is, it combines therefore both brass and woodwind instruments into one. And I'd like to say it combines sort of the disadvantages of two different instruments, half flute or half trumpet. <laughs> and it sounds a bit, I'm, again, the microphone is probably not going to, maybe I should take off my headphones. <laughs> incredible and it you know that the, the sound of the cornetto uh, has been described as one of the closest to the human voice and actually every time I've been playing with a cornetto I I was so amazed about the sound especially with you but then I was a bit frustrated I have to tell you because with the violin we try to imitate to imitate uh, the human voice and the cornetto but we'll never uh, well, it's be funny successfully. Because, and, yeah, and during, say, the beginning of the 17th century, the first half of the 17th century, there were two instruments that were considered the most important virtuoso solo instruments, and they were the violin and the cornetto. And there is, again, pre precisely in those years, say from 1590 to 1640 or so, there's all this repertoire where really super virtuoso sonatas written for either violin or cornet, which means anything you could play on the violin, you could play on the cornetto. The two instruments shared the center stage, so to speak, for about 50 years. And then the violin, which was the new modern instrument, developed a super virtuoso technique, which the cornetto simply couldn't keep up with. The cornetto was always very expressive, but it has a different kind of expression. It, uh, it's virtuoso in a different sort of way. Um, it's a bit difficult to put it in, uh, in, into simple words, but it, it, because the lips vibrate very much like the vocal cords of a, of a human singer, there is that element of acoustics in the instrument that make the sound simply because of the physical way the sound is produced a, a, a bit more vocal. One of the earliest tutors for the violin, which was written by, I think, Francesco Rognoni, he says, by nature, the violin has a kind of, strong or he said di suono aspro which means yes. it's a it's a bit of a, a a grating or the sound is not sweet on its own you have to temper the sound of the violin when you play it the same cannot be said about the cornetto the cornetto just by virtue of what you can do with the sound it, that's really how you imitate the human voice it's not so much the sound itself, but it's what you do with the sound, how you can make a crescendo, a decrescendo, the variations in articulation. Um, these are the things that uh, that allow a cornetist, I think, to, to imitate a, a really good singer. And with the violin, it is certainly possible, but it's second nature for the cornetto in a way that it is not second nature for the violin, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And of course, when the violin developed the um, virtuoso uh, skills, of course, from he, on, onward, he, yeah. he, he got even uh, farther from the human voice. And uh, then, then yeah. Tartini would describe very well that saying that there are things that are for instruments, 
and things that are for uh, to be sang. And of course, when uh, but every time I approach my students, uh, talking a little bit about the very early music, uh, any any words I spend about how to shape the sound, I always uh, I always refer to the cornetto, because yeah. yes, we have to work hard in another way to make our sound really vocal, and it's not really the nature of the violin sometimes. So the cornet is always it's not our automatic. Point. And in, in certain ways, yeah, a, a, a good cornetist will automatically do some things that good singers will do. Yeah. So, but I think both of us as, as violinists and as cornetists would still say that you model your playing after that of a really good singer. Yeah, that's of, of course the point of reference, Phrasing but I think for all, us, yeah. if, we, if we think the voice, that's a little bit farther. If we think the cornetto, it's a bit easier for us to try to imitate. But anyway, that's uh, such a um, wonderful instrument. 